Hi, my name is C-Mac, and I am excited to get into this with you. If you are new here, my name is C-Mac. I'm from C-Mac's Paperbacks. If you have been here before, welcome back. I'm sorry for my um, inconsistent posting. Um, th that's kind of the point of this this video is that I'm trying to be better of posting. I'm trying to be better with sharing my love of books. Sometimes I feel like sharing it on the many social media style platforms gets in the way of actually reading the books. And I'm trying to be better with that. I realized that that's my shtick in 2022. And so 2023, I will, I'll try. So welcome. Um, I'm sure what you're here for is what did I enjoy reading in 2022? What deserved my five stars? I feel reflecting back in 2022, something I want to do better on is be kind of stingy with my five stars. Um, I don't, I think everyone on my list deserved my five stars, but that is something I'm going to try to be more stingy on because I want to be able to look back and hand you a book that I rated five stars and say, dive in. I am very confident you will love this. So that's my 2023 goal. But let's look back in the year and see what I rated. So first one. I don't know if you can see this. You can't. A History of Wild Places. So this book was what I voted for as the book of the year. It did not win. I did just read the book of the year and that was great, but I didn't finish it till 2023, so it didn't make my list. But A History of Wild Places I booked for my book of the year. I thought it was incredibly touching. It's raw. It is, it makes you uncomfortable. It's about wolves really, but there's, it's way deeper than that. I gave it five stars. The masses at Goodreads they're struggling here, 3.97, so take that into account, but I, I loved it, and it is definitely, in my head, the book of the year for me, 2023. The next book is The Maid. I also really love this, obviously. I loved all these books, that's why I gave it. I also really love this. The masses at Goodreads say 3.85, and that kind of makes me sad. Um, to me, the Maid is, it's a murder mystery, you could say, sure. But it's not about solving the murder. It's not about the big twist. It's, that's not what this book is about. This book is about the maid, the actual maid, and just her personality. And I've never read a book where the whole point of the story, like the, the plot, all that, it had really, that's not what it's about. It's a plot, sure, plot, yeah. But this is about the maid and how cute she is and wonderful she is and her personality and what she brings just to the pages. And this is my first book where I fell in love with the character and it didn't matter what the plot was doing. This character was just so endearing to me and it wasn't supposed to be taken so seriously. And so it kind of makes me sad it's sitting so low. This is also I rated as one of um, books awards and it didn't win that makes me sad <laughs> but I would definitely recommend that one um this tender land is not was not published in 2022 I was late to the game there but I if you haven't read it you should it's a story about kids um yeah there's this one old movie and it's these kids and they're on a railroad track um mama something maybe I don't remember but that's what it reminded me of and I loved it it's very, um, it just touches your heart. It's a beautiful little, little kid adventure story. Wonderful. 4.39, so people at Goodreads agree with me. All the Light We Cannot See is another five star for me. Goodreads masses are averaging at 4.3, so I think anything over four, especially if you've been published for a while if you can keep your rating over four with the average of the masses of goodreads peeps i mean you're doing great so another one definitely pick it up it is a world war ii book 
So I I went through like a huge World War II phase and I got really sick of them. But this one, this one didn't bother. It was, it was excellent. Amazing. And the Midnight Library. Again, another one I'm late to the game to. The Goodreads peeps say 4.03. So we're getting there. But again, this one was weird. I think if it has the word library in it or book in it or bookstore or book club, I think any avid reader would gobble it up. Kind of. I don't read the synopsis before picking up the book. So it was kind of crazy reading it because I was like, wait, what did I, what did I get myself into? It's very life and death. Literally, it's life and death. So yeah, if you if you have any, um, if you're going through something, if you have any thoughts, I guess I, I wouldn't recommend this one. You This is one of those books I think that you need to be in a good headspace for. And yeah, it's still five star because of how Matt did it. But yeah, make sure you're in a good space before you pick it up. That's my warning to you there. And the Book of Cold Cases by um, Simone St. James. She is one of those like creepy authors. Um, 3.82 at Goodreads. Hey guys, what's up with that? But yeah, she's she's good. She's a quick thrill. She's that... I think sometimes a book says movies. I would always rather read a book than watch a movie, but I, they they play the books play in my head like movies. And this is one of those like really, you it's a movie on Netflix and you watched it and you really enjoyed it. You don't really need to watch it again, but you enjoyed the moment. That's what this is. But it's a lot of those style books. I give four stars. This one still just extra special. Deserved five. Um, any of Simone St. James books her as an author I would recommend anyone who likes like thriller ghosty yeah she's a she's a good writer I did try in 2022 to try to pick up some of um books that historically I just felt like I should I have to read to say I'm a reader you know and one of those was player piano by Kurt Vonnegut um 3.89 which I mean that's a really old book and it is pretty high up there this was kind of nuts for me I mean, read it and then look around the world and be like, wow, was Kurt like, did he like describe the future? Like it's, I don't know. This was kind of nuts, especially I work in tech. So it was extra nuts because I'm like, holy cow, this is the world today. Nuts. Um, yeah, good one. And this one. So this, I will always say to you, I will read any book. I mean, I read boring biographies. I read fantasy sci-fi, regular old non-fiction, you know, I'll do it all. But one thing I don't really do is like those cheesy romance books. So I don't even know why I picked this up, but I picked up Book Lovers and I loved it. Okay, maybe it's because I had the word book in the title, but I loved it and I think you will like it too. It's really like cute, cheesy. Um, again, I'm going to it's not a movie, but it should be. I think anybody, everybody would love it. Um, Goodreads holding at 4.23. Emily Henry definitely deserves it. This is very, very cute. I would say it's like a, it's like a modern day Pride and Prejudice. Am I, I don't know if I'm out there. Tell me in the comments if you disagree and I'm going nuts. But yeah, I really, really loved it. And I think I was watching Gilmore Girls during it. So I, the setting was like kind of Gilmore girls -y for me. I don't know. I loved it. Okay, next. Again, one of those historical books. I actually got this as a present and um, my husband's grandma died and someone saw it in her house and passed it on to me because Anne of Green Gables is what my husband's grandmother um, was referred to often. And so yeah, this five stars for me. It's, it's really really cute. It maybe means extra more because of that personal connection. Um, but yeah, I have a beautiful like leather bound book of it. And so yeah, even just reading that book that I know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it touched me a little bit more just because of that. But yeah, it, overall still the way this, this book was written so long ago and the way that it like hung on in. Yeah, it's wonderful. 
funny. Yeah, pick it up. And I think um, if you have any uh, girls, younger girls starting reading, this would be a great recommendation for any kids you have. Uh, Goodreads, 4.29. Good for you. Okay, next one. Beats of Extraordinary Circumstance. So this one, again, I was late to the game. I don't know what my problem was. Why did I, why I didn't pick this up earlier? But easy five stars, um, super, super touching. Yeah. Again, I, I would put it like almost like with the, um, this tender land. It's just like kids and it's like an adventure and it's just, yeah, very, very, very touching. Very good. Um, makes me want to look into more of. Lang's books. Goodreads 4.19. So it's hanging on there. Next, I'm glad my mom died. So I this was like one of my first audiobooks that I really loved the audiobook version. I'm really trying to get into audiobooks, but I'm just a eyes to the paper kind of girl. So yeah, this one having Jeanette actually do the audiobook, which seems pretty common in like celebrity style, like biographies but this was just good it was good hearing her tone it felt more like a conversation rather than a book I was reading listening to yeah um really eye-opening witty yeah easy five stars and goodreads totally agrees because it's sitting at 4.59 so that's really good for for goodreads people we're we're kind of harsh sometimes Again, Hemingway. Hemingway is a book, is an author I'm trying to read more of. So A Farewell to Arms, I picked up this year, this last year, and it was excellent. I love the way Hemingway writes. I think you either like Hemingway or not. And this was very insightful to his life. And yeah, it was very interesting. I enjoyed it. 3.81 on Goodreads. So they're having a hard time with it, but I thought it was great. The next one is Hester, 4.04 on Goodreads, so we're struggling here. Um, Hester is kind of loosely based off of Scarlet A, or <laughs> the Scarlet Letter for the A. And yeah, I didn't know that when I picked it up, so I hope I don't spoil that. It is in the synopsis, so if you read the synopsis, you'll know. But yeah, I didn't know that when I picked it up, so when I got to like the last few pages, I was like, what? So maybe that's where my five stars came from because it was just so mind blowing. But yeah, it was, it was slow, but I really enjoy the kind of twists people put on classic stories like the rewrite of Peter Pan or even like the book of longings, which is based on Jesus. I mean, I like when people rewrite that. I think it's very interesting. Next one. I read all three, which is really one book. I didn't know that. I read all three of The Lord of the Rings, and those were easy five stars. You have, you don't have to do anything you don't want to, but for me, that was not five stars, like, already. People said they were really hard to read. I think that's why I didn't pick them up sooner. I didn't think so. I didn't think they were that hard. I, I enjoyed them. Sure, the second book, which is really just the second part of the one book, it was a little long. It was, it felt definitely like what people do when it's just the thing that gets you from one book to the next. I hate it when you're reading a series and you're like, nothing really happened. And then the third one hits you hard. And it's just, it did feel like that. It was boring. I didn't really like it. But I've watched the movies many a time. So I knew that kind of was happening. So nothing was a surprise in the book. I did really enjoy seeing how the movies changed. I thought the movies were so well done. And now I'm like, wow, you guys missed some stuff. But they didn't do as bad as The Hobbit. And so now I even actually appreciate the books slash movies tenfold more. Obviously, Goodreads people agree and they appreciate the historicalness importance of this all because Goodreads is sitting at 4.38. So awesome. Moving along, I go. <laughs> so I picked up a quart of thorns and roses. I was hoping I didn't like, wouldn't like it. I did. I wanted to be done with it, and then I picked up the second book. I'm annoyed. I just want to be done with the series. I don't know. Is there seven, eight? But Sarah Mass deserves 
all the credit in the world because I don't want to read this and I feel like I have to. So even like talking about it, I'm like so down, but I gave it five stars and I gave the first book five stars and I read the third. I think I did four because I don't know. I got annoyed about some things, but I'm probably going to pick up the fourth and I'm probably going to pick up the fifth. And it annoys me that she has pulled me into this world and I don't want to be a part of it, but I am and I'm stuck. So if you don't want to like this book, if you're negative about this book, but you're a reading addict like me, don't pick it up at all because she'll suck you in and you, you got eight books to read and she writes other series and I'm sure those are awesome too. So obviously Goodreads exit, agrees 4.62 on this. The second, to be clear, this is the second one in the series, A Court of Mist and Fury. I don't think I said that before I went on my annoying rant. So yeah, this is like one of the best ratings I have. So <laughs> the book I didn't want to read um, has my the highest Goodreads rating. And yeah, pick it up though. I'm being serious, pick it up. She's a great writer. It's a, actually a good story. So good for you. <laughs> Jacqueline in Paris is uh, about Jacqueline Kennedy before she was Jacqueline Kennedy. And it's about her year in Paris. It is fictional. Um, people are pretty harsh on Anne Ma because of that. I don't know. I think Anne Ma did wonderful research, it seems like. I don't really know anything about Jackie Kennedy, and I wasn't interested in her when I picked this up. But, yeah, I enjoyed the story for what it was. Five stars for me. Goodreads being pretty tough on her at 3.71. So, yeah, I thought it was a good book. I, I think books in Paris are are really wonderful. So if your settings in Paris, it's just one of those like categories where it's like, ding, okay, I'll read you. So yeah, great book for me. Malibu Riding, Rising, excuse me, from our favorite TJR, Taylor Jenkins Reid. She's awesome. Um, I like all of her books, I believe. And Malibu Rising was no different. Again, it read like, I mean, it's literally Malibu, but it read like a, a big Hollywood movie. So yeah, surfing, Hollywood stars, the, it was wonderful. Um, Goodreads is being kind of tough on her at 4.08, but an easy five stars for me. And again, I read another Hemingway book. So I did a movable feast. We did go to Paris. So I wanted to read Hemingway's little weird little like short story journal -y thingy about Paris. And I actually wrote down a few of the places that he mentions in the book for us to visit while we were on the trip. So that was really fun. I This book I attacked a little differently. I read a little chapter a day. It was kind of hard sometimes I snuck into. It was hard to carry it through because I it's a short book and I wanted to eat it up. So yeah. Again, I wouldn't recommend if you're new to Hemingway, I wouldn't start with this one. I have a few other of his books in my my back catalog that I've read and so this kind of references them so it was really interesting to hear him talk about his real life and then you're like wait that happened in A Farewell to Arms and you're like oh yeah it's based on his life very interesting yeah um that's my heads up to you okay last one are you still with me if you are, thank you. <laughs> um, my last one was Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. She is obviously a superstar right now. She has a movie coming out, which is really cool. Reminders of Him. What was that about? Oh, yeah. Um, with Kenna and everything. So, yeah. This was good. Um, Hoover can hit or miss sometimes for me. This one obviously was interesting. Yeah. I don't really, maybe, maybe it's a four and a half as I'm reading this now. I did think it was interesting. I do really enjoy the way Hoover attacks kind of uncomfortable um, subjects. Like this is all about like this mom who got out of jail. I won't say why. I think you figure it out in the first chapter, but I really want to be careful about spoilers. Um, yeah. And is she a bad person? I mean... Yeah, so it's just, it's interesting things because as a reader, you go from like hating someone to kind of seeing them more as a person. Um, Hoover did another book about domestic violence and it is, it's really interesting the way she attacks things. So yeah, um, five stars. But those are my five star books. 
Um, I'm s my overall like reaction to this because I printed this in you know end of December. I printed it a while ago, and it, I haven't looked at it yet. And since right now, and yeah, it's I'm surprised at the five stars. I'm surprised. I feel like I should have more. I feel like I gave them out too easy. I feel really conflicting. So let's see how 2023 goes. Um, this is also, these are my list. I read 117 books. So I guess I was a little stingy. That's not that long of a list. But yeah. Um, if you're still here with me, thank you. Like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube lingo stuff. But let me know some of your five-star books down below in the comments. Um, I'm always looking to build up my TBR. And... I'm sure you are too. Maybe that's how I built my 2023 TBRs by watching videos like this. So I thought I'd share mine. So yeah, I'll leave just the written list down below. So everyone, you don't even have to listen to this. You can just copy and paste it there if you want. <laughs> okay, I got to sign up. This video is too long. I will talk to you guys later. See you for more 2023 books and hopefully more five star. Hopefully 2023 has just as long and annoying as video as this is because I read so many good books. But I'll see you guys later. Bye.